Thank you, everybody. Welcome to Build. I am your host, Ricky Camilleri. Uh, what happens when a couple of young lover criminals find themselves holed up with an old couple who happen to be complete psychotics? This question gets answered in the hilarious new thriller, Villains, starring Bill Skarsgård and directed by Robert Olson and Dan Burke. Let's take a look. This is a hell of a predicament we find ourselves in. I used to be a salesman. I could read people. Now, I'd like to take a stab at selling you. Judging by the broke down car and the sorry state of my front door, I'd say both of you are on the lamb. Everybody get down! Next door, Florida! How'd I do? That was amazing. I feel like I might be able to read people just like that. I'm gonna try right now. Um, your clothes look expensive, and this is a pretty house. But you know what I think the most telling thing about you is? Come on, baby, there's nothing down here. <laughs> it, it's, it's the little girl you got chained up in the basement. We're taking her with us. All right, you're free. Come with us. Ah! Sooner or later, someone's gonna come looking for you, too. But there's still time. So are you guys gonna kill us, or, uh... Everybody, please welcome Bill Skarsgård, Robert Olson, and Dan Burr. Hey. Uh, guys, thanks so much for being here, and thank you for thanks making for this uh, extremely dark, hilarious, Twisted fun movie. Uh, I want to know where it's where it started for you. Where you got this idea to tell the story of two kind of bad people who get caught up with two far worse, much 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 worse people. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, we um, we we were kind of obsessed with all of these um, kind of young criminal couple films. You know, like a. True Romance or, you know, Badlands and things like that. And we were, you know, we were always really interested in um, the kind of moral sliding scale where some of those movies, you're really rooting for those people. You know, in True Romance, you, 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 love, you love that couple. But then, like, Natural, Natural Born Killers, they start murdering a lot of people. And by the end of it, you're kind of like, maybe this is not okay anymore. And Natural so we, Born Killers still sides with them, by the yeah, way. Like, yeah, the one failing of Natural Born Killers, which is a movie I, I love. <laughs> Last time I watched it as an adult, I was like, oh, I don't, I don't know, <laughs> guys. This is a little off yeah. at the end here. Yeah, and the so, media criticism, but come on. Yeah. So, so, you know, we had, uh, Mickey and Jules were kind of in our head. And, and we, um, you know, for the longest time, we were sitting there trying to figure out what do we want to, like, pit them against. Like, we knew we wanted them to break into a house and find something and have there be some sort of antagonist there. Um, and it was a question of what is that thing going to be? Is it going to be, like, you know, something uh, more supernatural or um, something crazy like that? And we, we, we sort of stumbled upon uh, what we found to be the most narratively interesting antagonist, which was kind of like this bizarro uh, world future version of themselves, really, you know? Um, and and once we once we figured that out, that's where the, the rest of the movie kind of unfolded from there, and it kind of becomes this, like, examination of, like you said, there's, like, there, there of course, by the you know Miriam Webster of it all, they're they're all villains, but it's there's a lot of moral relativism there, and you know just because you're committing a, a crime doesn't necessarily make you the bad guy. Well, there's the petty criminal villain, and then there is the psychotic murderous yes. villain, right. which is kind of what they're against. Uh, Bill, what attracted you to the to this part? Um, uh, I was I was in the middle of shooting a, a Castle Rock, uh, and um, uh, like so many of, of of my roles, it was also a really gloomy, dark <laughs> role, uh, and I lost a bunch of weight for it. And, and and you know, I was like researching solitary confinement and what that does to someone's mind. And I was like, oh boy. Um, um, so I was, you know, we were finishing finishing up that sh uh, the first season of that show, um, and I get this script, and um, you know credit to these guys but the script was was was, was amazing uh it's thank you pretty much the script that, that that ended up you know we ended up shooting and um 
And, uh, you know, just like the movie, it's like this movie is sort of the best way to experience it. N not, I know you just show the trailer, but like actually not seeing the trailer because like you don't know where it's going. And as to, you know, for the first time reading the script, that's sort of the freshest eyes you can have as, as, as a potential audience member for the movie that, you know, you would eventually maybe do. So, uh, um, so I was reading it. And I'm like, what, where is this going? Oh, she's taking off her clothes now. Okay. What, what's happening here? So, uh, uh I was immediately, immediately hooked. And then in terms of the role of Mickey is it's, it's, um, uh, it's, it was just so different than what I was doing. Like this guy is this kind of, you know, lovable, enthusiastic, you know, fast speaking uh, idiot. <laughs> he's kind of a dimwit, which I liked about yeah, him. I mean, yeah. he's not a dimwit in a way that uh, is annoying. It's what's lovable about him. Yeah, yeah, and he and he tries, you know, he, he tries really hard, <laughs> which it's is always an endearing so quality in a, in, in a person. This sort of odd reason that he is a pe petty criminal. Like, you can't really imagine him existing outside of this little world that he's developed for himself because he's kind of not smart enough to handle the yeah, world. no, exactly, and you and you meet these characters um, sort of in the middle of their story, right? Like the the, the opening scene, they're robbing a gas station. Spoilers, <laughs> spoiler alert. <laughs> no, it's the opening scene of the movie, and and, and you uh, and they're obviously running away from something. So you can just imagine that there's like, okay, we're we're in this movie. You're introduced to you know in the middle of their story of. You know, potentially, you know, they have this bag that says Rocco on it and filled with drugs and who's Rocco and, you know, someone <laughs> probably not too nice that they took that bag from and they're on their way sort of to, 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 to uh, uh, escape to Florida and, and start a new life. Um, um, uh, where am I going with this? <laughs> I think you covered it all. <laughs> you guys are um, a directing duo. You direct together, right? You write together. Yep. How, uh, how does that work on set? Uh, we have a little sort of backpack system where I'll go on his back and nap while he directs, and then we swap every like fifteen minutes. Um, no, I mean it's it's a it's something that has sort of grown organically over the last you know past you know whatever seven eight years since we started working together. Um, but neither one of us is, uh, has a specific specialty where it's it's not like I'm you know the acting like, director and he's the the technical director or something. It's just basically after every take. We kind of just have to like look at each other for two seconds, and like thousands of nonverbal cues are exchanged between us. Uh, and then, uh, and then you know, I'll go talk to the actors, he'll talk to the DP, or I'll go talk to the production designer, he'll talk to the actors. Um, so you know, our golden rule is just that it it can sometimes be uh, annoying, or um, uh, it can be a liability sometimes to have two directors, both for actors. If we, God forbid, ever gave contradictory directions to a performer, that could be really disastrous. Uh, or for uh, one of the craftspeople, you know, if we're, it, it's annoying, it's like, okay, if I approve wardrobe, oh, well, we gotta go get Bobby to approve it too. So our rule is just make that an asset, you know? So we've worked very hard to kind of like merge our brains to be one thing so that you never have to, you know, you, if I approve it, but there's trust that Bobby approves it too. And is that like something that. that you do in pre-production where there's just maybe even more talk about what you agree upon? So when you get to the set, there isn't any any possible disagreement. Yeah, and, and really that's beyond pre-production during the actual shoot. You know, the after a shoot, we'll, we'll go back. We're inevitably staying at the same hotel or in this movie's case, uh, Dan's parents' house. Dan's uh, mom. And... Um, uh, and, and we'll kind of game out the next day. You know, you, you look at the scenes that you're shooting, you game it out in your head, and you're like, what, what things could pop up? How, how, how could somebody misinterpret what we want them to do with this line? Or we'll run the scene together or something, and one of us will, you know, say a line in a certain way, and it's like, oh, is that how you think that would go? I thought it was gonna be more like that. And then you start a conversation, and you just try to, like, hammer out all of the, you know, cre like Dan said, we're very close creatively, but of course we have differences. We're two different human beings. And so you just, Are you, you have, <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Um, but like, you know, you just try to figure that out before you get to sex on an independent movie like this, you have no time. And so, you know, we can't be wasting any time arguing amongst our, the, ourselves, you know? So we just try to get there with, and have a, you know, a unified front. Yeah. We kind of have the, the, Hitchcock philosophy with prep that like if you hire good enough actors and you prepare enough like you almost should be able to be like semi on autopilot you know there's 100 be... takes is all you need yeah now. exactly right <laughs> do you find that uh, I mean with a story like this with a genre piece like this you can go in so many directions while you're inside this house you know you can go into the torture direction or you can go into several escapes 
what did you find yourselves while you were writing it going in any of those directions or did you know pretty clearly from the beginning the kind of story that you wanted to tell yeah we we um you know sometimes we'll write a movie and we we'll outline it first obviously most of the time i'll say you know we we outline something you kind of know where you're going to wind up and all that this one was a little bit different of an experience it kind of felt like we were we knew the characters that, that we wanted we knew the general situation that they were in and then it became a question of like well, what would you really do in this situation if you were there what would you do and we would game it out and we we're like, okay what if they do this and then you work it and then like two scenes later you're like uh-oh we died that didn't work and so then you like go back and we're like, okay well what if they did this and you know you kind of just like worked it out that way so the the writing process of this movie was kind of like bill uh you have uh this scene with kira sedgwick where she uh dances for you and there's a bit of a seduction on your part but again this character is kind of goofy so it's a, a goofy seduction a little bit can you talk about shooting that scene with her um yeah yeah it's it's an amazing scene um it was amazing on the page as well when i read it i'm like oh this is really weird <laughs> well, it's out of nowhere it's out right? of nowhere we, we're black and then all of a sudden we come up yeah and we're and in you're the like midst whoa, of whoa, whoa whoa what's going on here and it's uh, um you know it, it immediately established a uh, 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 Gloria and 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 and, and George as as not your normal uh, villains or or psychopaths, um, and um, but the scene was you know um, yeah Kira just you know, I mean she had an amazing she she worked on 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 that dance and that performance with a dancing friend of hers right and you know rehearsed she took it the costume she took the costume home, home. so she knew how so you know on the day it was this whole performance. Uh, and and it's so weird that like I didn't really have to act all that much in it. It's just me going like, wait, okay, you know, um, um, and then yeah, and then that you know, a scene ends one way, and then you 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 you're, you you meet 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 them uh, again when uh, um, Mickey's trying a an, another uh, a strategy to get himself uh, you know out of there, and this is a time it's uh, seduction, um, and uh, yeah. His version of seduction is so uh, stumbling, though. I, I, I love that. He's not necessarily good at it, and he's really thinking it up in the moment and, and yeah. improvising it. Yeah, well, I mean, and that is, there's a lot of those moments in, in, the, in, in, in the movie where, you know, as we, you know, were developing Mickey and who he kind of became was one of the things was that he's, uh, he's maybe not the, the, the smartest guy you've ever met, but he's like quick, he qu thinks quickly, like on well, the he's spot. He's street smart. He's sort of street smart. So he's like, uh, so his brain is like constantly working, trying to figure, fi figure out a, a, a plan. And the plans are always kind of weird and like, yeah. you know, but yeah. he's like enthusiastic yeah. and like, oh, this is a great idea. And like, I'm gonna take it and run with it. And, mm -hmm. and, and so, so there's, there's, there's a lot of that in, in him, just kind of constantly tr thinking uh, sort of on the spot to, to, to uh, come up with a genius plan to get out of there. Uh, what was it like working with uh, Make? I've been a fan of hers for uh, a number of years now. Uh, Mike is great. Micah. Yeah, terrific. Yeah, uh, and uh, you know, um, um, that was one of those things where you know uh, I didn't know her before really, and 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 uh, um, um, you know she was when she was attached to the to the movie. I was like, okay, great. Like uh, we were so lucky that we had a um, you know a week or ten days before we started shooting where we rehearsed, talked to these guys, we had read throughs. Uh, and we were staying at the same hotel, so we could like go out and have a dinner and like talk. Like, who who are these guys? Like, where what's their backstory? Like, again, like it it, it it's kind of important for us performers that we know what their dynamic is because you do meet them in the middle of their story. Um, um, so uh, um, so yeah, so we just kind of her ideas of who Jules wa was and 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 like who uh, how they met and and why they f fell in love and all these different things was stuff that we could communicate and talk through. So we had an idea of, of who these guys are when you meet them in the movie. So you guys had time. You had like a uh, a week of rehearsal and yeah, that's uh, a rarity. How did you yeah, get that? It never happens at this budget level. But we we knew now this you know this isn't our first rodeo and it, it being our third film and we've never had a chance to rehearse before this. I think on body we did like six hours of rehearsal or something. That was all we could get. Um, but we knew that was going to be really, really important. And this movie, more than our others, perhaps, it, 
totally lives and dies on the performances. Like this is just a chamber piece. It's a it's a play that's in one space, and it's just these actors with you know fully sort of naked, and it's just them acting. So, um, and our tone was such a narrow bullseye that we were trying to hit that it was like all four of these performers needed to be in the same movie because if one was up here and one was down here, the whole thing would be a colossal failure. So, um, yeah, that was like top priority was that we could get into a room. And during that time we found so many things too. Like there was a lot of sort of improv and freedom in those, in those sessions and those read throughs we did with each individual actor. And then we did with the couples and then we had a whole uh, table read with, with everybody. And there were so many like just sort of off the cuff elements that we ended up incorporating into the script based on that time. So the movie got so much better in those seven days. Um, and yeah, I, I, I don't think we'll ever make another movie without at least that much time because of those improvements. Uh, Bill, you said, uh, you mentioned Castle Rock and, uh, sort of gloomy character. Of course, Pennywise isn't necessarily gloomy, but he's, uh, you know, he's a villain. A joyful, joyful guy. Joyful guy in, in some way. He enjoys terror, terrorizing people. Where do you think, how do you think this has happened where you've gotten cast in these sort of gloomy or scary or terrifying roles? Um, I'm, guess I'm doing something right in that department. <laughs> 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 I don't know, you know, like, it, it, it'd be, um, sort of being an actor and trying to establish yourself in the business, you're, you know, you're. Um, I respond to certain type of, of material, but uh, there's other types of material that I also really respond to, and then you're not ending up maybe getting those types of roles. So I don't know why, you know, I, it wasn't like I was set out, uh, you know, uh, to for my career on on playing a monster clown or these kind of, you know, horror horror, horror or, or thriller uh, uh, type of characters. So, um, um, but. Um, but yeah, and you know, it's like I, 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 again, with this movie, you know, I want to do um, as many different pr roles and characters and stories as I, you know, humanly can. So like, uh, um, I, I did the clown, and you know, all right, cool, that <laughs> went 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 well, and <laughs> yeah, it went so, pretty well. Did so, all right. <laughs> so with you know, with and then with with uh, this role, there was you know all these other you know uh, different. Um, challenges for me in terms of like, oh, he is g so goofy and comedic, and I mean Pennywise can be goofy and comedic at times as well, I think. But it's it was just you know this is this is a character that you actually you know hopefully love. I mean I fell in love with Mickey, and we fell in love with Mickey. We're like, oh, this guy, you know, like you this lovable idiot, and and he's sweet, and 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 uh, um, you know that was a new challenge for me to see if if I could do that, if I could pull off uh, that type of performance. So yeah, there's a. Um like you said, the lovable idiot is a different kind of goofiness than like Pennywise in a way. P Pennywise is constantly himself as a character performing an idea of some kind. And with uh, with Mickey, I feel like you probably just have to sort of be this thing that he is. Um, yeah, no, 100 percent, 100 percent. And uh, um, yeah, and I think, you know, like, like with any project that, you know, you think. Uh, that, that goes well, um, you read something and I go, oh, this guy's great. And, you know. These guys were a bit skeptical on, on 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 me as a casting choice before talking to me. I mean, they knew it was like, oh, wait, but what have Bill done in, in this type of tone before? Uh, and then we skyped, and we're like, oh, guys, like we communicated in a way. We're like, oh, I understand this guy as well as 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 they do. And then our two ideas, kind of, you know, or three ideas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you have separate ideas? <laughs> <laughs> One idea, yeah. Kind of, yeah. Uh, kind of merged Point into five ideas each. Yeah, to becoming this. Um, uh, this guy that 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 um, that you know in the in the best in the best uh, the best result is when you look at the character and you're like oh like that's that's a guy that's a person it's not me it's part me it's part these guys and, and uh, you know it's it's something else. Did you? I, I have to ask this question. Uh, when it too was coming out last week on Twitter, there was this photo of you and Bill Hader uh, on set where you're in your full clown makeup and he's basically making you gut laugh out of character. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you remember what the conversation was that the two of you were having and why? I mean, who knows with that you? guy? It's like, <laughs> it's just funny, funny things constantly. He's a machine. Um, so um, they just happened to catch one of those moments. I, I was uh, pretty, that, that whole day, it's uh, the scene where I'm sitting on top of the <clears throat> Paul Bunyan statue and I'm, you know, terrorizing him and I'm flying down. So a, a lot of that day was just me stuck in a harness uh, <laughs> sitting up like you know, uh, um, twenty feet up on on this big statue, uncomfortable day, and it was hot and 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 you know makeup and sweat and everything. So whenever whenever you know, I, we, I was just standing around, 
um, you know, Bill would just come up and talk to me, and and he's always so funny, and 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 uh, um, and for me, it's like, uh, you know, because I've gotten this question a lot, what you know, where it's like, oh, like, are you in character and and stuff like that with Pennywise, and and um, uh, it, 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 I've nothing com compares to how exhausting that performance is to do. Like it's it's so ener energetic and it's big. so he's, big. he's I mean, so big, but it's like every single moment is is what I wanted to achieve. It is buzzling with energy, like he's about to explode in any any given moment. So um, so it's like doing sprints. So like between, I'm like. <sighs> Just going like, all right, okay, like, hey, hey, Bill, how's it going? <laughs> oh, yeah, cool. And he says some fun shit. I'm like, oh, that's really hilarious. All right, where did it go again? And then it goes into this, you know, maniacal thing. So for me, it was it, the whole the way the way I would shoot it was was to just to just you know reserve my energy as much as I could, so I was able to do um, the sprints for every take. You know, oftentimes when people come on for a small movie or a big movie and they're known for doing smaller movies, they, people ask the question, like, what's the difference between shooting a big movie and a small movie? And there's very obvious differences. But one of the things that I've always, that I've been fascinated with these It movies is that they are big horror movies and that doesn't exist. Like, rarely does a horror movie get, I mean, it was massive that Jordan Peele got $20 million to make Us. And that's one of the biggest horror movies, I think, in terms of budget ever made. It is somewhere in the 60s, 80s, something like that. It's way up there. What is it like to sort of be a part of a horror movie with that kind of uh, limitlessness that you probably won't ever see if you do ho more horror movies after that? Well, uh, as you probably know, more money doesn't mean, uh, you know, limitless. <laughs> Sometimes it can mean more limits because <laughs> uh, 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 there's more at stake for, for the ones who are giving you the money. But but no, you know you're absolutely right. I mean, in the, in the, 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 there was a big shift between the first and the second movie, where the the, the first movie was still a, a really big budgeted horror film, but I think it was around the 30 million range or something like that, and and yeah, and then the second one was closer to to three times that budget. So so um um, but yeah, you know, it's, which means like oh, cooler set. Right, it just be like a lot of big to, trailers. You get to realize the space. Prosthetics trailer is twice the size now, <laughs> but it's still the same. <laughs> it's still the same guys putting on my makeup, and we're still, you know, listening to music on, you know, one of those little boombox things, whatever. Like it's uh, um, the experience of, of of shooting it, um, and even like a movie like this, like it's it, it, there's it's less people, but it's it's the same mechanics of what makes a film. Do you know what I mean? Still a camera. It's still actors. It's still it's cameras. Still it's figuring yeah. out what the scene is. Yeah, exactly. Get it done. So it, it's 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 always like that, that kind of um, uh, going down to the you know the, the core of what it is that we're doing, and we're like it's just surreal and weird, man. Like I mean, the, the whole ending in, in it, it too, <laughs> like almost the, the, the whole motion capture performance, but we re rehearsed it so. I'm th we're in this the, the 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 you know the studio and um uh with all the adult losers you know like Hader and McAvoy and Chastain like these are huge names Ransone and, and Ransone <laughs> <laughs> uh, um and um uh, Isaiah and <laughs> J Ryan <laughs> everybody I just like to throw a shout out to James Ransone every now oh, he's and then. fucking amazing oh, you can I say that yeah because whatever you I want can curse yeah um 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 uh, but uh yeah so what, what we we like rehearsed it it's like I'm, yeah I'm, I'll be there pretending that I'm a 10 foot clown monster <laughs> like walking out going I've missed you and you know and it's like this whole thing and and uh, and it was so so bizarre and what they would do the how we would shoot it I mean uh, I'm, I'm I hope this doesn't ruin the experience of watching the movie but they would have this like you know they would have a, a, a big printout face of how big my face will actually be once the CGI is there <laughs> so there's, there's this guy walking around with a pole and then it's like this <laughs> 10 foot face of Pennywise but it's just a picture right like and 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 and, they, and they, so he's going and I'm going and I have a, a microphone like this like the, the voice of God going like and like doing these lines as the guy is walking with the thing and then as that Matt sounds pretty scary going, yeah. it's horrifying like, maybe scary these guys are running away trying to pretend to like dodge you know things when I'm hitting it and like it's that thing is like what well, you know at, at times I just pause like what, what are we doing here <laughs> yeah what are yeah, that, we those doing? aren't moments where you're sitting there sort of like figuring out the scene and trying to get you're just sort of doing full imaginary shit at that point yeah it's it's yeah it's and it, and it, again like i mean it's it, it's 
it always it keeps cracking me up. Like I mean, I I love acting and I love actors, but like it's one of the, the it's one of the most ridiculous things ever. I mean, and you feel it as well because like when we act, we have to like we you you give one hundred percent you know seriousness and, and and dedication and devotion to what whatever it is scene that you're doing, and sometimes you're playing against you know a, a picture. A ten foot picture of a clown face, yeah. but you're still like, oh my god, oh my, and you're playing. Or sometimes it's sometimes it's a tennis ball, yeah. Yeah. a piece of tape. Like, there's a tennis ball right there, <laughs> but like right by the camera, there's like this tennis ball, and you're like, oh my god, what? Don't leave me. And it's, like, and then and then you, you, you're like, you you really believe that you're talking to this ten, like this tennis ball is, you know, yeah, the you're, tennis you're, ball you're, will be Meryl Streep. Yeah, we're done. yeah. <laughs> she uh, she went home early. <laughs> That's why I've always sort of been on the side in some way of whenever you hear a story of an actor freaking out or having a tantrum of some kind on set. I'm sure there are stories where it's not because of the acting, but acting is so hard. You, it's really hard to separate the humiliating feeling that you have playing you're this pretend. Close, you're this yes. close to feeling it, and that, that's, what, I think, and why it bubbles people up sometimes. Yeah, you because you're like, hey, it's, I'm not ridiculous. Yeah. I'm not ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> this is a real job. <laughs> it's serious, you guys. Uh, I have one more question about the the Stephen King uh, universe that that you that you've occupied, which is that Alex is now occupying it as well. He's been cast in the stand. People are saying that joining the club. That's what people are, are are kind of saying. Were you aware that he was going out for this? Did you put in a word for him with Stephen <laughs> King? Stephen, he's he's great. He's great. <laughs> um, um, yeah, no, I was. He he, he brought it up with me. I mean, this, this, the, the the it was going back and forth. There was a lot of things that I had to kind of uh, schedule wise for like if he could do it or not do it, but. But uh, but yeah, he told me. I was like, dude, that's uh, it's 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 uh, the second most uh, iconic uh, uh, <laughs> villain after Pennywise. So you know, um, S Silver, go. Cool. <laughs> nice, second, second place is great. Also, I have a bone to pick with that too because you know when we try to like find what people are saying about our movie on Twitter, it's hard to like search that. So forever, I was searching villains, Skarsgård. Because if you just do Bill or you just do villains, it's too broad, you know? So it was always villains, Skarsgård. And ever since that casting decision came out, it's completely fucked the search algorithm. And so now I'm we trying to like, the like and villain Skarsgård and it's like, with the stand! And, and, then, like, and, no, now not spend, and now we spend 10 minutes talking about it. <laughs> right. I was gonna say, Pennywise didn't, Pennywise didn't fuck that too? Yeah, well, no, because like I, I, it had just sub subsided just a little. Uh, and maybe yes. it fucked it a little bit, but now it's fully fucked. Yes, with with yeah. two Skarsgård villains going yeah. on. So we'll blame him. We'll blame Alan. And my dad has played we, villains yeah, exactly. this entire. Stellan is not helping either. Yeah. We probably shouldn't be like searching Twitter for mentions of our movie anyway. We have maybe better things to do. So this is probably good. <laughs> uh, we have time for a couple questions from the audience. A few questions. Who has a question? Hi guys, uh, my name is Lila. I saw the movie actually last night. Right. I really oh, great. loved Thank it. You. It was great. It was hilarious. Bill, you were great. I was just wondering, since you guys were watching the movie with us, what did you think of like the audience reaction to it? Did we like laugh in the moments you expected us to laugh? <laughs> there was one scene when everyone them. was like, uh, like "Aw." Yeah, it, it's it's always so much fun watching with an audience, uh, and we've only gotten so many chances to do it. The first time we saw it with an audience of any kind was at South by Southwest in March. Um, and, and yeah, I, I, seeing when people laugh and when they don't is always really, uh, really, really interesting. But I think you guys laughed at pretty much all the, all the points that, that we expected. But it's, it's funny cause it's a good question, but, but it's funny. Uh, that was the first time I saw it with, with an audience and, and, and uh, I thought the sound was too low in the theater and it was yeah, it like was. people walking around and the people coming in like 10 minutes late and I was like, oh, fuck, oh, God damn it. <laughs> uh, but, um, 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 but, but, but it was a fun experience and like I wanted to see it with an audience cause it's, it's a movie that you want to see in the theaters. It's a lot of like gasps and laughs and, and sniffles and like everything that you want in a, in a, in a movie. Um, but, um, um, but yeah, like watching, watching it a second time in the theaters, I mean, there's so many moments for me that I thought was funny that I didn't maybe clock the first time. Like there's the obvious funny beats, but there's like so much stuff there that like this movie's like a great rewatch that way where you just go like, because there's so many like great performances that's in it. Like, you know, uh, um, uh, Jeff, uh, Jeffrey Donovan, you know, he has so many things that he does where you're like, I mean, that, uh, that, that I, like, I, was, I didn't feel the audience clocking it and laughing it because I think they were just so in the mo mo movie at that point. But I was just, oh, my God, like, oh, yeah, like, he did that. Oh, that's great. Like, he's hilarious. Everything like, so is so performative. You know, any kind of, like, body movement of any kind is, like, illustrating this, like, ridiculous absurd facade of dignity or integrity that he yeah. pretends that yeah have. but there's like there's looks that he gives yeah. sometimes where you're like, oh, like it's just yeah. it's gold. But beyond the um beyond the laughs like the, the 
what we feel like is the coolest part about this movie, or at least like what we've become most proud of, is the is the like non traditional verbal responses from audience members. So yeah, it's really fun watching. It's also the like most nerve wracking thing that you can do is be in a theater with you know a hundred plus people watching your movie. Like I just want to like shrivel up and just like I just like hide in my chair. You know what I mean? Like and there's just there's nowhere to and you're just like you know the whole time you're just like you know because you've watched the movie a thousand times times you everything that's good in the movie you don't see it anymore all you see are like the little the little mistakes that you you're like oh i wish we did that differently and you're, you're kind of sitting there and you know the times that someone is supposed to laugh or gasp and you're sitting you're like please laugh please laugh please laugh and then they laugh and you're like yes fuck yes and you're on to the next one and you're dreading like the next moment of like when's the next time they're gonna and i just it, it's you know it's a it's a yeah, privilege a to have a movie. It was a good time last night. Yeah. Sounds like yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, yes, it's I'm terrible. great. They laugh. Yes, yes, hitting all the marks. <laughs> yeah, they like well, those. Two more. Hi guys, I just want to say I also have seen the movie. I've seen it twice and I loved it both. Oh, yeah. all right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, um, but for Bill, I wanted to know you've become sort of a horror icon. I want to know if you embrace that and if we'll ever see you do anything kind of outside of that. Like we got you for a fraction of a second in Never. Deadpool 2. <laughs> so we'd like to see you do something bigger. And then for Dan and Robert, I wanted to know what your next project is. Like if you guys have anything up your sleeves currently. Uh, great questions. Um, um, and uh, yeah, no, I, like I said before, I, I want to do as, as many different types of, of, of genres and roles and, 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 and performances as I, as, as I can, you know, like you will, there will be that point where I'm like, okay, you know, it's, it's exciting, but I'm a little, you know, can, can I do this? But it, it's worked before. I'll try something new. And then you're like really fail hard. <laughs> like, yeah. Bam, <laughs> and then you're like, all right, okay, won't touch that again. Uh, <laughs> moving on, uh, but no. So for me, it's uh, um, um, you know, the horror genre is, is 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 great, and and you know, I'm sure I will do a lot more in it. But it, I'm, I definitely don't want to you know niche myself just to to the, to that genre. What are you guys up to? What are you guys doing now? <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it's funny because we're sort of, you know, we wrote this movie in 2015. You know what I mean? So, like, we're used to filmmaking being this sh this schlog where you have you have this idea and you're just going out there every day, like, trying to make it happen, trying to convince people to give you money, trying to convince people to be in it, trying to, you know, and it's, and now, you know, that it's, you know, we've had a, a little bit of success with it. People seem to like the movie. Um, you know, our, our first two films were much smaller. Um and and now we you know we have a couple of options or whatever and so we have our next like original script that we're hopefully going to do but there's also a few other things and we've literally never been in this position <laughs> where like we, we have a, an option with what we want to do instead of trying to kind of you know you're usually just pushing the rock up the hill every day and it rolls back on it you know and and now yeah, and um, it's like for 10 years we were like the thirstiest possible people like i mean any like oh you want us to direct like a toothpaste commercial like oh, we love oh, toothpaste yes, we love it. of course but we need to uh, buy food but now, for the first time in our careers, we've actually gotten the distinct pleasure, and I don't mean to be too vindictive about this, but of passing on an offer, which is like a really, it, it feels like not in a, you know, it just, you've, you've, you've worked so hard to knock on the door and get into the industry. It's, it takes a decade at least, it, it seems, with, with other people that we've spoken to in our experience. Unless you're more talented than we are. Right, of course. Even that, that would make it faster. Uh, but... But yeah, to now, like Bobby said, to actually be able to sit and think about our careers and like, okay, what's what's next? What movie would be best so that we don't get pigeonholed too? In a weird way, we're sort of at well, he's massively more successful than we are. But uh, but you know, it's like villains. I think was an opportunity for him to be like, okay, look, I can also do this. I don't just do the horror things because there's a world where if he did three or four more roles that were like Castle Rock or Pennywise, that no filmmaker would ever see him as anything but that. Um, and our first two movies were had no humor whatsoever. They were like the first one's a straight thrill, uh, you know, just a thriller. The second one is a vampire action movie. So it's like for us, we were like, this is a really important moment for us to show that we can do things like that. that this is the world we want to be playing in. Villains is, is our most personal movie. It feels like it expresses who we want to be as filmmakers more than anything else. So, um, so yeah. Now whatever our next step is, we kind of want to continue that expansion and show people what we can do. Uh, one more. Uh, hi. Can you tell us about some more upcoming uh, projects? Um, me? Yeah, you. <laughs> we already dodged our questions. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I, uh, I, um, uh, I, I shot a film with a wonderful director, Antonio Campos. Uh, it's a Netflix film. 
um, called the Devil All the Time, huh? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, and um, uh, you know, it's 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 based off of um, um, uh, of a novel of the same name, and it's, it's, it's Southern Gothic. Uh, nothing cheery about this guy. It's like it's seriously like one of the darkest things I ever had to do. I think it's. Well, it's Antonio Campos. It's Antonio Campos, and you know, it's like this you know man coming home from um, the Second World War and. Um, and uh, completely traumatized by, b about it and, or by it, and tries to kind of readjust and becomes uh, fanatically religious, and it, everything goes to hell. Um, so, um, but it was an amazing shoot, an amazing thing to do and be a part of. Uh, and you know, I haven't seen it, but 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 I, but I, but, I, but I hope it turns out really good. Uh, and then there's another thing that I did called Naked Singularity that we shot here, and uh, Chase Palmer directed uh, that we shot here in in New York uh, that's set in the uh, public defense attorney world. And um, that was a thing that where that role is also very much smarter <laughs> than 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 Mickey maybe, but he's very you know a fast talker, overthinker kind of a, a, a character, and is also very comedic. Um, and uh, Chase saw this film and said, "You're hired." <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. So uh, to the, your point of like uh, doing welcome. different kind of things, uh, no, uh, well, no, people jobs all over the place. Yeah, um, that's the yeah. phrase we can, uh, we can hope for. That you know that you know I showed up like, oh, can can Bill be funny? He's like, well, he's you know, some th some some people think I'm funny in this movie, <laughs> and, and 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 you know, and 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 then that kind of you know let me to you know do that role that that was challenging in different ways, but 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 still super fun to do. So yeah. Uh, well, guys, thank you so much for being here. Congrats on Villains. Thanks it opens next us. week, right? Yes, yes. September yes. 20th. Bring all your friends. Tell everyone you know. Yeah, go see it. Please. Go see it. It's, uh, it's, uh, I think, you know, if, uh, to add something, it's, it's you know, it's, it's an indie movie, and, 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 and these films have, uh, uh, it's gotten harder and harder for them to, to, to get made in the first place, and let alone get a thea theatrical release. So please go out and support it, and, 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 and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the movie. And it is a movie that is more fun with an audience, I think. A hundred percent. All Definitely. movies, but specifically this, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. If you want to see more original indie films in theaters, then go see this one. I'm going to give a huge round, huge round of applause for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Thank guys. You. Thank you very much.